Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, please hit that subscribe button. And if you're watching or listening from the podcast, please hit that follow button. Your support is so appreciated. I swear, every time I see somebody subscribe, follow, or listen to the podcast, I'm just like, every time it's so exciting. Today, we're going to be mixing Women's History Month with Brain Awareness Week, which is this week. Uh, I am a neuropsych student, which is behavioral neuroscience or neuropsychology. And this ramble is on unleashing the power of the female brain. I at first wanted to do all around like general neuropsych, but after reading this book, it got me so interested in women's health. Being a woman, I've always been interested in women's health and researching women's health, but it's this book that really got me in tune with just how everything, I always knew everything was connected to mind, body, and soul, but it's so much deeper than that. It's everything is so sacred with what we surround ourselves with, what we eat, the supplements we take, the clothes that we wear. It is so sacred to just, it really is a big compound in womanhood is understanding all those things and what works for you. And I really hope that this ramble is taken kind of like as a guideline. Uh, when I would just post stuff on my social media before doing podcasts or YouTube, anything, even reels, I would get like some backlash on like, you know, you can't tell us what to do or even, you know, like my body's different than yours or different races or even different genders. And it's like, okay, I get it. These are just suggestions, things that I learned. Please take no offense to this. Again, I am a student for neuropsychology, but I'm very passionate about the field. So I will read about it all day. I will research about it all day. What I learned, I have no, I have no regrets or hesitation when it comes to sharing it with you all. However, I am not a licensed psychologist. If you have real questions, please schedule an appointment with them. I have notes on my computer so we can keep track. Again, how it worked in my last ramble, I really did not want to give too much of the book, but with this book really giving guidelines and suggestions, I I just feel like it's best to kind of spoil it a little, you know what I'm saying? I had to get my matcha, but today I put uh, peppermint in it. I've been putting vanilla in it for flavor, but I'm getting lazy. I moved to coconut milk. I don't know why. I think they like sweeten it up a little bit. Almond milk wasn't doing it for me anymore. But peppermint is also linked to cognitive focus, function, and memory. Same with matcha. We'll get into that, but just a side pointer of me personally. All right, so first, falling in love with the female brain. That's the very first chapter. And your brain is the absolute most important part of your body. I understand that we all think that it's our heart, and it is, but without the brain, the heart's not gonna pump anything. And that's just, you know, simple, that's just what it is. And we have to understand how important it is to our body, and we feed our brain with a lot. We feed it with food, words, even what we think, our thoughts, all of it contributes to how it affects our day-to-day -day life. Because again, the brain is the most important part of the body. It tells us everything to do. Everything I'm doing right now and saying, my brain is making the decision to say it 10 seconds before I actually made the decision to say it or consciously made the decision to say it. 10 seconds before I consciously made that decision, my brain was already making the decision. My hand movements, everything. My brain is doing that. Like 20 seconds ahead of you, your brain is always steps ahead of you. You have to understand how important it is. And my desire is considered brain envy. And brain envy is the desire to balance in your hormones, your food, your workout, your day-to-day -day life, your work schedule, psych like your psychological well-being. You want to balance all of that for your brain health because you understand that the brain is the most important part of the body. This is brain envy. And to really take in all the information I'm going to give you, you gotta have brain envy. The reason that you clicked on this video, you either A, love being a woman, why wouldn't you? And two, you have brain envy already. You want brain health. You want to 
better yourself. I can't sit here and say like I'm completely perfect for when I'm 20. So my prefrontal cortex isn't even completely developed yet. There's going to be so much that I'm going to learn. I might even not want to do neuropsych by the time I'm 26. And that's something that I've accepted. But accepting those changes and that as a woman, those changes come frequently. It's all throughout the month. We're going through these changes in our brains. You got to want to balance it. But beside clicking on this video because you love being a woman, there's a lot to why you should love the female brain, despite it being your own brain. And here's why. There are key cognitive strengths that women have. It's intuition, collaboration, self-control, empathy, and worry. Although worry can be our downfall when it comes to being very anxious and when our intuition mixes with our worry and our man's not answering the phone, You know how it gets, sis. You know how it gets. I know how it gets. <laughs> Away from just the key cognitive functions that we have, we also have a larger prefrontal cortex than men, which is responsible for judgment, language, decision making, any type of mature <laughs> decisions that are made is going to be made in the prefrontal cortex. And as women, we have a larger one than men. Despite and besides the prefrontal cortex, let's move on to the hippocampus, which is the function in the brain for memory. Yeah, we got a larger one of those than men as well. That's not an excuse for your boyfriend to forget your anniversary, but we have a bigger one than them. Now, I'm not gonna say that we're smarter, but biology doesn't lie. We kinda are, we kinda are, we kinda are. Uh, so let's first start with intuition, breaking down a woman's intuition, because yes, it's real, it's there. If any man's watching this, he's probably like, how do women just know things? How can y'all just know things? Calm down, bro. I'm about to get there. <laughs> so for those who don't know, intuition can also be known as the sixth sense or extrasensory wisdom. Uh, working alongside our empathy, this is why as women, we know when a coworker is upset or we can walk into a room and we feel the vibe or even when our child gets in the car after school, we immediately know that they had an overwhelming day or when our man comes home and he's just not, you know, we can tell, okay, something happened at work. It's just who we are. It's just what it is. But unfortunately though, our intuition can become weak due to hunger, lack of sleep, stress, our menstrual cycles, feeling crowded and feeling unappreciated. I can relate to this as a woman when I had a child and when my, when I'm sitting there and I'm just, you know, like I know my daughter's four, okay? Preschool is the most stressful thing in the world <laughs> to four-year-olds, okay? They, they don't understand the whole social construct yet. They don't understand really following rules entirely yet. So it's a very, it could be very stressful for them. But when I'm like, oh baby, like, you know, you look like you had a bad day. Do you just wanna, you wanna just go hang outside today? Just go play outside, just go run around outside. And she snaps back like, no mommy, I'm sad. I don't know, it hits, it hits deep. And people say like, you know, women were so emotional and we take things to heart, but no, it's just our empathy and our intuition feeling unappreciated. Like we know how you feel, we know what's going on. Not entirely, cause when we just think that we know things, obviously it's gonna put us in a, you know, it could put us in a deep hole in a bad situation. But overall though, when it feels unappreciated, when we're sitting there just like, I know I can feel it, I see that you're upset. Over time, it's not gonna, you know. Uh, but all in all, the fun fact to take away from this section is that because of our cognitive strengths and because of our larger prefrontal cortex, we make better bosses. Yeah, women make better bosses. Go tell your pap at that one. All right, because we have increased empathy, our collaboration skill, concern for social groups, less risk-taking behaviors, and having a bigger prefrontal cortex, which again is responsible for language, decision-making, and so on. So we briefly mentioned hormones with brain envy and why it's important to want to balance those. 
But as women, we have specific hormones that are so detrimental to balancing. And this is estrogen, proestrogen, and testosterone. Yes, we carry testosterone as women. I mean, you got to think about it. We create life. We create every gender. We create every race. As black women, we can create every race. But as women, we can create every gender. You know what I mean? We carry that. So, of course, we're going to have those hormones. Um, but first, estrogen is what helps us think clearly. Proestrogen helps us feel relaxed. And there are three types, though, of estrogen created by women. So there's estrone, estradiol, and estriol. And I apologize for how much I'm about to look at my computer. I just have to really be able to pronounce these words, I know. So estrone is lost just before menopause. So this is why most women in their premenopausal stage get breast cancer. They are so prone to breast cancer. Most women who had breast cancer, it's right before they hit menopause. It's because of how much um, it's because of how much estrone is lost during that time. And estradiol is the strongest, and this is produced in our ovaries. It's responsible for thinking clearly, cardiovascular function, maintains bone density, supports cognitive function, and our mood. Extremely important. And estrol being the weakest actually protects the breast and the vaginal tissue. So it's still important to balance that, although it's the weakest. So signs of low estrogen are weight gain, depression, insomnia, heart palpitations, irritability, fatigue, and hot flashes. Too much estrogen is puffiness, heavy bleeding, carb cravings, vaginal yeast, tender breasts, and mood swings. Now, all those sound super familiar, right? This is because we produce so much estrogen during our menstrual cycles. Uh, and this is why like, it's most important to really want to balance these hormones during our menstrual cycle. I've heard a lot of women say that during their period, they prefer to just juice and they will just drink like fruit or they'll just eat fruit that whole time. And it makes sense. Later on, we're going to get into the 52 specific foods that help and what they help with, but also balancing certain hormones with supplements and foods you can take. We'll get into it. And obviously somewhere, I got this whole whiteboard back here. I will be overlaying and putting it there. Um, but supplements that you could take to improve these levels, if you're not going to want to, this is my first time, so I'm on my menstrual cycle right now. And this is my first time really trying to just eat straight fruits and vegetables uh, during my menstrual cycle. But if you're someone who, cause I'll be honest with y'all, when I'm on my period, I'm eating ribs, chocolate, Bro, burgers, like, I don't know what it is, but I just want all the nasty stuff. <laughs> I want all of it when I'm on my period, and I know you do too. It's like a second pregnancy or something. I don't know what. Oh, like, I just crave it all. So if you are still, and that's okay, still going into those cravings, that's fine. Um, There are supplements that you can take during that time. There's dino, di, I apologize. Dinolamethane, omega-3 fatty acids, currently I take fish oil pills, calcium d glucurate probiotics, plant phytoestrogens, black cohosh, and melatonin. So proestrogen is what helps us prepare the uterus for a baby. When nothing happens in this proestrogen, this stops, and then we start another cycle. So think of you had you you make a lot of estrogen during your menstrual cycle and then women once we get older we learn that we can only get pregnant 10 days after our period 10 to 13 days after our period it's because of ovulation there's a lot of proestrogen being made during ovulation and again remember proestrogen is responsible for making us feel relaxed but it also helps our interest in sex and this is why during that time period while we're ovulating our uterus is making room for a baby, it's making it comfortable for a baby, and it's making it easier to make a baby. So please, girls, 10 days after your period, do not call that man. Just don't call him. Just don't call him. <laughs> You're just horny, literally, that's all. It's just like a cat when they're in heat. It's our ovulation. Like, we're just horny. That's all, babe. That's all. Signs of low proestrogen or anxiety, depression, trouble sleeping. PMS, premenstrual headaches, postpartum depression, and bone loss. So this is, we'll get into it, but women, 
So when women are pregnant, they're producing tons of proestrogen. Again, we produce proestrogen because we want to get pregnant. So then once we do get pregnant, we produce a whole lot of it, which is why women who are pregnant, they tend to feel really, really good. Phys now, when I was pregnant physically, I did not feel my best. But mentally, I will be honest, in the beginning, it was pretty rough. But I... I think it's also situational to every woman's pregnancy, but my beginning of the pregnancy was mentally not easy. But towards the end, I was so happy cleaning all the time. I was so happy to become a mom. I painted my daughter like this special lined wall with colors. I did a whole, uh, I did um, Y plus B equals like the whole everything to figure out like the line and how long they should be on the wall. Like you just do that when you're pregnant and you feel so good doing it. But once you lose all that proestrogen, once you had the baby, oh, this is why a lot of women fall into postpartum depression. I was blessed. Um, if you all ever want a video on postpartum depression, that's something that I researched a lot when after I had my daughter, because I was surprised that I didn't get it because I do have bipolar two generalized anxiety disorder, and with bipolar two depression is something that's really underlined in there. So I thought for sure I would get postpartum depression. But because I already had the chemical imbalance, losing my proestrogen didn't make a huge difference. So if y'all want a video, let me know. I'm getting a lot of sidetracked. Like I said, this is, I love this topic. I love this topic so much. All right. All right. So next is testosterone. And yes, it is known as the male hormone. Men carry way more testosterone than we ever will. But it does us wonders, though. As women, we need to have testosterone because if without testosterone, we can have depression, poor memory, low libido. And when testosterone levels drop in women, so does their interest in sex. And it makes sense. Men, y'all just horny. <laughs> y'all are just always so horny. But women, we got them 10 days, probably won't catch us out. Uh, so what steals our testosterone in a way? Abdominal fat, stress, excess sugar, processed foods, insulin, zinc deficiency, and alcohol. So I think all of our own people should not drink. But as a woman, alcohol, alcohol messes with us so much. Now, we, I'm about to get into the section with what, like, you know, what we eat and how that affects us. But, I mean, you know what, what you eat goes straight to your brain. But as a woman, alcohol... We don't lose weight like men. We carry weight in everything that we eat. Like this drink, it's matcha, it's great. Mm, coconut milk, peppermint, and everything. It sounds healthy. If I keep drinking these till I graduate college and don't go to the gym, it's, it's going to catch up with me. And women, we all have that problem. We look at our little brother, it's like, bro, you ate a whole pizza. Not a single pound. I ate one and my face broke out. I'm so angry for the rest of the day and just I'm gaining weight now. Now I'm bloated. As women, unfortunately, we just, our brains are wired differently. Our, our bodies are constantly on go. Men have that, it is what it is, go with the flow, out of sight, out of mind, mindset. As women, we have a hard time doing that. And it's just, a lot of social constructs are the reason behind this. I mean, look at every woman that you know. I doubt that she can get away. Like, we can't, every responsibility that we have as women, we can't just get away from it. We can't just get away from it. Once we have kids, I can send my child to school. I promise you, I'm still thinking about my baby. 24-7, I'm still thinking about my baby. I'm, I, you know, I, at the end of the day, I don't think women are the only people who should be taking care of a home. I think that is so wild. That is such a terrible mind frame. But nobody can make a home look like a home the way that a woman can. It's just the truth. I'm constantly thinking about how I'm going to do this with my house. How am I going to do that with my house? How am I going to do this with my house? I got to go get gas. I got to go do this. I got to make sure the dinner is done. We will always have our minds just on a go because unfortunately our responsibilities are not something that we can just escape from. And you think about it, when we're little girls, even the toys that we play with prepare us for like, oh shit, like this is what being a woman is. You know? It's just not because even when our parents might have bought us like that cute, like a doctor jacket or a scientist set, and it was a like play set, they also bought us a baby doll and they probably bought us a kitchen too. 
but boys they're given like all these different like career toys and stuff but for women it's never we are it starts at a young age that we kind of know our responsibility and role in this world so it's only ever going to be on our minds again this is why in the beginning i said worry is really it's 11 11 y'all it's 11 11 y'all but all in all that's what it is all right so next let's go over vitamins minerals and herbs to support hormone balance so to support all hormones Multiple vitamin, fish oil, probiotics for gut health. We'll get into that later. Calcium, vitamin D, zinc, melatonin, and selenium. To balance estrogen, them, calcium, plant phytoestrogens, flax seeds, evening primrose oil, and black cohosh. I took evening primrose oil in high school, but that's because I was on a birth control. I was on the next one on, the one that's in your arm. I was on birth control and it was causing like a lot of vaginal dryness. And once I started taking primrose oil, I mean, that was not the problem no more. So, and then I had to get off that birth control. I kind of want to do a video, like a girl talk. And let's talk about birth controls and how none of them are good for us. Let's really talk about the birth controls, how none of them are good for us. Even plan B's are not good for us. It's like... Just don't touch me. Literally, just don't touch me. All right, so to alleviate PMS, calcium, magnesium, vitamin A and B, evening primrose oil, 5-HTTP, and green tea. Vital chance berry. To balance testosterone, DHEA, zinc, or saw palomita. Balance thyroid, zinc, rosemary, chromium, potassium, low dye, seaweed, ashwagandha. I take ashwagandha, but I was taking ashwagandha for stress. So once I found out that it can balance a lot more than that, I'm definitely about to go buy a new bottle. Balance cortisol, holy basil, remora, ashwagandha again, and rhodiola. To balance DHEA, you could take DHEA or 7-keto DHEA. To balance insulin, chromium, cinnamon, or bitter melon. And then some healthy hormone habits despite supplements. The reason I am so passionate in Neuropsych 2 is because there are a lot more ways for brain health than just supplements and pills. Your habits do a lot for you. So getting seven to eight hours of sleep, eating healthy, eating brain smart carbs, eating fiber, drinking water, managing stress, and adding supplements to your diet. Now, I, again, just said I'm not a huge fan of always suggesting supplements. But my mom, for example, it doesn't matter how much meat she eats. She's shivering cold, shivering cold, can't stand up for long. My mom has low iron. She has to constantly take iron and zinc pills. It's just what it is. Learn your body though. My mom, it took her years to learn that. She tried so hard. My mom will sit there, she'll make a salad and majority of the salad is sunflower seeds. Like my mom has tried everything to get her protein up to really help it. And she just knows. And plus my mom has had multiple kids. So that's also gonna affect the woman's balances too and her hormonal balance in her body. She has no iron. So my mom has to sit there and take that supplement. That is okay. It's not always going to work with like your foods and your habits. Some t a lot of our issues happen before we were even born. If you, if your mom was pregnant in an environment that smoked a lot, I promise you were born with asthma. If you, if your mom was pregnant and homeless, I promise you were born with stress disorders. It's just what it is. We, when we're pregnant, we carry so much. And this is in the book, but I feel like that's for the women who, like, y'all got to pick up the book and read it. I'm not going to give everything away. But when we are pregnant, everything that we do, imagine when you're pregnant, it sucks. Because after I had my baby, I told myself, I am still a person. I'm still a separate person. I'm, I'm a mom, but I'm also Ariana. But when you're pregnant, you are that child. At the end of the day, you and that child really do become one. Everything you do, that baby is doing, is filling, it knows. It, I promise you that baby knows. Promise you that baby knows. Promise you. My daughter, she she can make friends with anybody, but yo, you got one time to tell my daughter, like, um, she's so happy, cool and chilling by herself. She can what? At the park by herself. She's cool. Me, when I was pregnant, I learned how to, 
I learned my individuality through isolation and being alone a lot. I was very isolated and alone during my pregnancy. I was in my room a lot. I didn't talk to my friends. No offense to them, but they were still living their lives. They didn't have kids. I had my daughter really young. Getting away from pregnancy, we need to understand that there are foods, you know, we talk about a lot of supplements, vitamins, and herbs that we can use and take, but our diet has a lot to do with it. The gut is the gut is nicknamed the second brain. Everything that you eat goes straight to the brain, straight to the brain, through the bloodstream. Um, it turns, so the food goes into the bloodstream, goes straight to the brain. The brain turns that into glucose. It uses that glucose for energy. But if you're eating a bunch of junk food, your brain's going to feel like junk. But if you're eating foods that produce a lot of healthy glucose and a lot of, I believe it's like ATP, like um, I am not a biology, <laughs> that's not my thing. A lot of what I do is chemistry. Hormones, chemical imbalances, I got you. That ATP stuff, baby, I don't know, I'm sorry. Um, I'm pretty sure though from what I remember in high school, is that the glucose is turned into ATP, which is basically energy. But if it's not able to do that because it's just straight sugar, processed foods or processed sugar, your brain's not gonna have that much energy to function, which ultimately is what I'm trying to say. So we can eat different foods. Dr. Amen, uh, Daniel G. Amen, who wrote the book, Dr. Amen. Now, I do not believe a man should ever tell a woman about her body or her brain because you don't have one. I don't tell men about their brains, their bodies, or nothing. Testosterone is proven to make you more horny. That's why I said what I said. I said what I said. That's all. It was nothing crazy. But I, I don't, I don't tell y'all. But Doctor Amen, he is a licensed psychologist, a licensed neuropsychologist. He works with many, many women. He puts all the test subjects in there. And his wife is also a neuropsychologist. And he beautifully quotes her in the book often and mentions her work and how her work inspired this book. All right. So, but here are the 52 foods that he suggests. It's a long list. So I'm going to be looking at my computer. So first, nuts and seeds. We have almonds, Brazil nuts, cacao, cashews, chia seeds, coconut, hemp seeds, sesame seeds, and walnuts. For leather means, we have chickpeas, lentils, fruits, acai berries, apples, avocados, blackberries, blueberries, cherries, goldenberry, goggy berries, grapefruit, honey, raw and local, kiwi, pomegranates, and for veggies, asparagus, beets, bell peppers, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, cauliflower, coral, garlic, horseradish, kale, leeks, macaroon, onions, seaweed, spinach, spiral, sweet potatoes, and wheatgrass juice. Oils that you'll want to cook with are coconut oil, grapeseed oil, olive oil. Don't worry, y'all. I'm posting the list and it will be in the description. Poultry or fish, chicken, turkey, eggs, lamb, salmon, and sardines, and then tea, matcha. So lastly, any supplemental noodles, uh, like egg noodles or shiraki noodles are good just to get away from them carbs. But how earlier we had talked about um, different supplements that help boost those hormones here are what can help boost those the two everyone's favorite 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 chemicals in the brain which is serotonin and dopamine serotonin is responsible for happiness dopamine is responsible for motivation you got a good boost of both of them you got a happy career uh, so to boost serotonin you eat sweet potatoes apples blueberries carrots oatmeal or chickpeas and then to boost dopamine, responsible for motivation again. So this is something that you really want to do like in the morning or even lunchtime when you're in the middle of your work day and you're feeling groggy. So beef, poultry, fish, eggs, seeds, oats, cheese, protein powder, and matcha. So I love to start my day with matcha. Um, I've been doing pretty good with my nuts, but I've been eating them with granola bars because I can't sit there like walnuts make me gag. Certain nuts are just, they leave a dry film in my mouth. And I'm just like, bro, you weren't even like worth eating. Like just be chocolate covered or something. You weren't even worth it. I mean, it is those. Brain envy, brain envy, brain envy. But it's nasty. I don't like walnuts. All right, so how does the phrase we already eat get proven? As I had explained earlier, the food goes into the bloodstream. Bloodstream goes straight into your brain, and then your brain turns that food into glucose, which uses that to turn into ATP and to become energy. And that's what you need to get through the day. All right. And then to discipline our brain, you have to understand your brain type. 
So please, when you all go to look up Unleash the Power of the Female Brain and you buy the book, there are tons of QR codes in here that you can scan and you'll be able to figure out and take different tests and quiz to learn your brain type, what type of habits will work for you, foods, um, oh, what, what are they called? Coping mechanisms. But I put one of them in here. I don't want to spoil the book, but I do need to give a good bit of it away. So your brain type that so you can have is impulsive, compulsive, impulsive, compulsive, sad, or anxious. Being able to understand that will help you with the coping mechanism that I'm about to give you all, and it's called killing off the ants. Ants is an acronym for automatic negative thoughts. And what you'll want to do is, and I'm going to post a chart, you'll put your situation, your aunt, what really happened in the new thought. So the situation, my friend cancels plans. The aunt, she doesn't want to spend time with me. What really happened, she has last minute family responsibilities. My new thought, I could see her another day. But using them for food, it could be a situation. I could either order a seasonal salad or I could get a burger meal. My aunt, I really, really want the burger meal because I know it's going to taste good. What's really happening, my brain wants that burger because we know it's going to taste good, but mentally I know the salad is going to do me better. So my new thought, let's just get the salad, maybe save the burger for a cheat day. And it takes time. Like There's a lot that I'm still disciplining my brain on. Again, I am not perfect. I'm a student in all of this. <laughs> like I just came to y'all as a student who's interested and passionate in the field. That's what it's all about. It's just... It takes time. Don't look at my list or even look at me and think, oh, like this is what I need to do. This is going to work. You might be allergic to half of this that's on the food list. So now we had this list of supplements that we can get again the situation with my mom. Extremely low iron. No matter how much meat she eats, extremely low iron. She has to take iron and zinc pills and all of that. That's what works for her. For me, too much protein, for some reason, it makes me so groggy, but that's because I naturally, again, I have certain disorders, so my chemical imbalance, I, my dopamine is on go constantly. Like, constantly, for some odd reason. I can be as sad as ever. I am motivated, though. Like, I keep going and going and going and going, because when I don't, I get real down on myself. So when I eat too much meat, I have way too much of that going on, and I burn myself out. So it's okay for me to just drink like a protein shake in the morning and then go on about my day just eating like fruits and stuff. It works out for me. What works for you will work for you. What activities will work for you. Again, Unleash the Power of a Female Brain. I got the book from Carnegie Museum. I'm gonna buy it though. Like I'm gonna buy this book. I wanna buy a lot of his other books. I really appreciated I really appreciated his perspective as a neuropsychologist for ways to help us, but he, every single chapter, he got at least three women plus his wife to really sit there and show like he is not just a mediocre man coming from a textbook. This is somebody who really has researched this topic, has sat beside his wife and researched the topic, and they have sat there and worked with hundreds and thousands of women. I mean, he's probably been licensed 30 to 40 years by now. Not a fan of men telling women what to do with their body, but when it's a licensed neuropsychologist who worked with his wife, I will respect it and I appreciated it. I really hope y'all like this video. Again, subscribe, hit that like button. If you are watching or listening to this from the podcast, please hit that follow button, share it with your friends, do what y'all do. Again, Thank y'all for watching my videos and for just being supportive. I swear I see every DM, every like. I don't forget who likes and DMs me at all. It's just, it means a lot for real. Yeah, y'all have a good rest of y'all day. Y'all have a good rest of Brain Awareness Week and Women's History Month. Take care of yourself.